Live from your local news leader, this is 18 News at 530. Here's what's happening right now at 530. The death toll from Hurricane Ida continuing to climb here in the Northeast. The state now scrambling to clean up. And back to school pushed back. Why one district in New York State is delaying its first day. Plus, bringing in COVID booster shots. How soon we could see them start to roll out. And who's in line to get one first? It's all coming up on 18 News at 530. And good evening, Twin Tears, and thank you so much for joining us on this holiday evening. I'm Sarah Wilson. We begin tonight in the Northeast. The death toll from Hurricane Ida continuing to climb here more than a week after that storm made landfall. And in the South, it is a similar scene. Many states are still reeling from the storm's devastating impact and now dealing with brutal heat. NBC's Gabe Gutierrez has more on that and the cleanup efforts that are still underway. Across the Northeast, communities reeling from Ida's aftermath. At least 51 people have died from the unprecedented flooding and destruction caused by last week's historic storm. This new video from the NYPD shows officers frantically trying to reach a flooded basement. With rising water and live electricity, they had to wait for specialized rescue teams. When they got there, they found three people had already drowned. In hard hit New Jersey, the search resumes for four people still missing, including two college students who witnesses say were swept up in the rushing water. Please pray for them, pray for them, please. Everybody pray for them. With at least 27 people dead in New Jersey alone, Ida's remnants are the second deadliest storm in the state's history. It could also be among the costliest. Water came right, right to the edge. So your entire basement was underwater? If it just came up a little bit more, then that meant everything. In Manville, New Jersey, it took Richard Mumber 11 hours to return to his home to check on it. Did you expect this much water? No, nobody did. For his wife, Kelly, the escape was harrowing. And I'm here with the two kids and the dog, and the water just kept getting higher and higher. And we have no idea what will happen to our house. These are the anxious moments when her family evacuated. Look at how high the water was. Thank God for neighbors with boats. That neighbor, Mark Mendersky. How many people did he rescue? I honestly didn't really keep track, but uh, I'd say a good eight families on my block alone. This neighborhood had seen floods before, but not like this. We were watching people getting picked off their roofs on with helicopters. Like it was like something out of a movie. By water, and we are also hearing about further. Governor Kathy Hochul gave an update yesterday on recovery efforts in the wake of Hurricane Ida. She started by signing a request from, for an expedited major disaster declaration. The declaration would provide funds for temporary housing assistance, crisis counseling, unemployment assistance, home repairs, and legal services for those who have been displaced. I want to be targeted bring all the resources to bear to help these people who will now need help getting their lives back in order, finding that shelter, finding food, finding new sneakers for the little kids to wear, and ultimately getting that FEMA assistance. And what I'm requesting from the president is what is known as not just the public assistance, but the individual assistance. That will give direct money for people to rebuild their homes. The state has incurred $50 million in damages to public property and infrastructure, and at least 1,200 homes were destroyed in the storms. Some local students are already back in class, while other districts are making final preparations before welcoming students back for in-person learning later this week. But some parents are concerned about bringing their kids back to school. Jen Selig has more. As nervous as I am about what kind of COVID protocols are happening in the schools, I'm really glad for her that she gets to go back in person. Holly Loff has two children in the Schenectady City School District. Her daughter Jane is excited to start fifth grade in person. Being on a laptop didn't let me learn as much as being in person would. But Holly wishes the district would continue their hybrid learning model. Last year, we had very low cases uh, in our schools. Part of the reason was that we had fewer kids in each classroom. So we really need the kids to be back in person. But that, you know, this maskless sharing air during lunch is a really big risk. 
Jamaica Miles, longtime community activist who also serves on the Schenectady School Board, held a public event to hand out school supplies and to answer questions from concerned parents. The school district printed out hard copies of the reopening plan um, of how things will be different based on the numbers of positive cases in the county. Um, the Schenectady County Department of Health is actually working very closely with schools and has a plan for testing. The district says they're following guidelines and and recommendations from all the federal, state, and local officials. Superintendent Annabelle Solar Jr. held a Facebook Live last Thursday to talk about the reopening process. Several parents in the comments were asking about a virtual learning option. We're offering a virtual option, it's only going to be for students with a uh, documented medical need that they're, uh, they have maybe a health issue that's compromised. Some parents say they don't feel comfortable bringing their kids back to in-person learning. They say parents should have a choice. That I was thinking of rem uh, not remote, um, homeschooling my kids. I had never done it before, but I thought it's safer to do because they'll be here at home. Reporting Jen Seelig, News 10, ABC. After hours of deliberation yesterday, the Rochester City School District Board of Education made the decision to delay the start of school to Thursday, September 9th. The delay comes as a result of a severe bus driver shortage. More than 70 drivers are needed and thousands of students are being impacted. In the meantime, the school superintendent says she's working with regional transit services to cover different routes. So far, the plan is still to have students in the classroom full time five days a week. Moving now to coronavirus coverage, the U.S. has hit a record number high of cases of COVID cases since the start of the pandemic. According to the latest NBC News tally, the U.S. now has recorded at least 40 million cases of COVID and over 651,000 deaths. Vaccine rates have been slowly increasing since July, but states and territories are still nowhere near reaching that 70% threshold, vac vaccinated threshold. The fourth wave brought on by the Delta variant is overwhelming. Hospitals now averaging 100,000 COVID patients a day. That's higher than any point last winter when the vaccine was not fully available yet. And we're learning more about Moderna's plans for a third COVID-19 boost, booster shot. Yesterday, Dr. Anthony Fauci said the U.S. will likely start to distribute Pfizer's booster shots during the week of September 20th, but the rollout for Moderna's vaccine could be delayed. The Biden administration has announced plans to offer third doses to people who received the Pfizer and Moderna shots pending approval from public health officials. Fauci says it looks like only the Pfizer vaccine will get that approval in time for that September rollout. An update on the U.S.-Canada border. Tomorrow on September 7th, the Canadian border will reopen to any fully vaccinated travelers who completed their vaccine series 14 days prior to entering the country. The reopening process began on August 9th when Canada began allowing Americans to enter for non-essential travel. And coming up, an update on a shooting in Florida that left four dead, including one infant. Where that investigation stands tonight. And sunshine returning for us. We can see a blue sky with a few fair weather clouds at the Elmira Corning Regional Airport. We'll stay dry tonight under a mostly clear sky and sunshine. Returning for us tomorrow. I'll have more in the next seven days in just a few minutes. You're watching 18 News at 5:30.
Welcome back. A man has been arrested after four people were killed inside a Florida home over the weekend. It happened early Sunday morning. Police heard gunshots from inside the home, went inside, and saw a man dressed in body armor. 33 year old Brian Riley, a former Marine, eventually surrendered to police and was injured by at least one gunshot. The victims range in age from 62 years old to three months old. That infant was shot in his mother's arms. When you see somebody so heartless, so calculated, that they will shoot a mother clinging to her three-month-old baby and kill the baby and shoot the family dog, this guy is heartless and calculated with his murder. An 11 year old girl was also injured and hospitalized. She has undergone surgery and is expected to recover. None of the deputies or police officers were injured during that shooting. Several people were injured in a shooting outside of an Atlanta nightclub early this morning. Police say at least five people were hurt when shots were fired outside the Marquette Lounge in the northwest side of the city. Crime scene tape surrounded the area near the nightclub as investigators proceeded the scene Monday morning. According to an officer, the injuries, injuries do appear to be non-life-threatening. Turning now to the west, where tens of thousands of evacuees are returning home to California as crews continue to make progress against that Caldor fire. Residents returned Sunday afternoon after evacuation orders were downgraded to warnings. California fire officials say more than 43,000 people were forced to evacuate as a result of those flames. Evacuees from the city of South Lake Tahoe made up about half of that total. My community is starting to fill up again. So, um, as you can see, welcome home. It's pretty amazing. The threat of that fire hasn't completely vanished. As of yesterday, the fire scorched more than 215,000 acres and was only 44% contained. NASA's Mars rover Perseverance has beamed back pictures after its first successful attempt and coring a rock from the red planet. After previous failed attempts, NASA officials are confident they collected sediment fragments based on the photos from the collection tube. The rover collected the samples with a drill attached to it. The samples will help provide details about the history of the second smallest planet in the solar system. And still to come on 18 News at 5.30, the highly contagious Delta variant is having more impacts on the economy. Employers are looking for workers, but the new jobs report shows hiring is falling. We'll explain why.
Welcome back. Passing rainfall with us this morning into the early afternoon, otherwise drying out with decreasing cloud cover. Blue sky with a few air weather clouds still overhead. City of Elmira weather set up for us for today. Cold front that's moving through the region. That brought today's rainfall, but again, it is now off to our west. Dry weather for us here at home. We can see that on our satellite radar. We'll stay dry as we go throughout the overnight hours and also mostly clear conditions. Patchy Valley fog forming late tonight, early tomorrow. Dry start to our Tuesday and sunshine will take us into the afternoon courtesy of high pressure. Comfortable afternoon, low humidity and temperatures. Not bad for this time of the year. Highs into the mid to upper 70s. Evening and overnight, still partly cloudy to mostly clear conditions as we head into early Wednesday morning. We'll see a cold front move in by mid morning and early afternoon hours. This cold front will allow for increasing cloud cover, but also our next chance for rainfall. Showers and thunderstorms become likely with this cold front. Downpour will be possible with any thunderstorm that develops. Plenty of moisture available for those thunderstorms to tap into. As the cold front continues to move through, drier air will work into the region eventually. Just a slight chance for a shower for us on Thursday. As for rainfall totals, main concern will be that potential for that downpour given recent rain. Excessive side for us, so soil is very sensitive right now. On average, close to a quarter of an inch of rainfall, but localized higher amounts will be possible with any thunderstorm that develops. That'll be our concern on Wednesday. Isolated flash flooding, not out of the question. But it looks like, as we end the work week, most will be on the dry side. Nice relief for us. Temperatures across the area, currently we're in the low 70s. Highs today were into the low to mid 70s. Temperatures or dew point temperatures comfortably into the 50s for us. This will be the same setup for tomorrow. Pleasant afternoon in store for Tuesday. As for tonight, cool sleeping weather. Temperatures will drop down to near 50 for overnight lows. That's under a mostly clear sky. Sunshine returns for us for tomorrow. Great day to be outside. Enjoy the weather while it lasts. Mid to upper 70s for afternoon temperatures. Still into the mid to upper 70s for highs on Wednesday, but dropping following that cold front as we end the work week. Slight chance for a shower on Thursday, but it looks like most will stay dry, mostly to partly sunny conditions, and that'll be the scenario Friday and also for the start of the weekend. As we head into Sunday, that'll be another chance for rainfall, chance for showers and thunderstorms Sunday and early next week. 18 News at 530. I'll be right back after the break.
You're watching 18 News at 5.30. Welcome back. General Motors has announced it's pausing production at several North American auto plants due to the global chip shortage. The demand for vehicles remains high, but reduced production because of the chip shortage has left dealers in short supply of vehicles and causing higher prices. Ships will be cut at plants and production will be halted on a number of vehicles, including trucks, sedans, and SUVs. The highly contagious Delta variant is having a major impact on the economy. So many employers they are looking for workers, yet the new jobs report shows U.S. hiring falling far short of expectations in August. So what's going on? Stephanie Rule explains. Today, disappointment and a disconnect. Only 235,000 jobs created, just a third of what was expected, despite a record 10 million job openings and employers desperate to find workers. There's no question the Delta variant is why today's job report isn't stronger. I know people were looking and I was hoping for a higher number. The surging Delta variant putting the brakes on months of strong job growth that's pushed the unemployment rate to the lowest level since the beginning of the pandemic. Hiring had been driven largely by restaurants, bars and hotels. But in August, that came to a halt. Employers hired fewer people because consumers are going out less and people are not applying for jobs that could expose them to COVID. This, as 7.5 million out-of-work Americans will lose all federal unemployment benefits beginning this weekend. Another 3 million will see their weekly checks cut by $300. It's an abrupt end to federal aid available since the start of the pandemic. In New Mexico, Jessica Helvey has been receiving $469 a week. It will drop to $169. Without these unemployment benefits, what would that mean for you? It means that some of my bills won't get paid. While many who lost benefits in the summer did not return to work, this fall, with schools reopening, a steady rise in wages, and other pandemic relief ending, the hope is more people start working again. But some economists warn that it may take time. Most of those many millions of people are not going to be able to find jobs immediately. For Jessica, a job can't come soon enough. It is very frustrating, like extremely frustrating, and getting to the point where it's starting to scare me a little bit. Stephanie Rule, NBC News. 18 News at 5.30. We'll be right back after the break.
That does it for us for 18 News at 530. Stick around. 18 News at 6 is coming right up.